on to this. Okay. Um, this is just got like. This is a Springfield Armory M1A. It's actually the uh, Squad Scout model, which features an 18-inch barrel. It's made in uh, by Springfield Armory in Genesso, Illinois. And this one started out as a California compliant M1A. In California, the M1A is actually one of the few battle rifles that you're still legally allowed to own that has interchangeable magazines. Now obviously uh, to any Californians that are watching, this one's not in a configuration legal in California anymore. I'm going to show you the original stock. Shown here is the M1A with its California compliant features. Uh, once again, the M1A had some things done to it which made it California compliant when they actually shaved the bayonet lug off. So, I don't actually own one that has a bayonet lug, but right around here, they shaved it off. You can see the machine work done. So it no longer has that. And the California one, this is not a California muzzle brake, but the California one actually comes with a muzzle comp brake that is sometimes considered better than the original flash hider that comes with an M1A. So, uh, uh, people actually prefer the California brake because it, it, it just works better than that flash hider. Not for hiding flash, but for, for muzzle comp. And then there's the original trigger. No difference between uh, the one everybody else uses and the California one. The original stock that uh, Springfield ships the Squad Scout in is a plastic stock, very lightweight. I don't know if it's chopped fiber or what that makes up the inside, but it's very lightweight and it's very flexible, not very accurate, but it is light. And I replaced it with a laminated wood stock and had done a, this is like a match grade. I had done a glass bedding job on the inside so it perfectly matches the internal workings of the M1A. This is the first time I've ever done one. Here's the the butt stock end that has a storage area. This flip up is actually for when you're shooting the M14 in full auto to keep the muzzle rise from flipping up, which wasn't a very popular feature on this rifle. Uh, that little trap door opens up. It's a pain in the ass to get open. You need like a screwdriver to get it. But it works, and it's actually a really cool little trap door. Kind of like uh, what you see in the A2 butt stock rifles. So we're going to see how this thing transformed from a California compliant into a designated marksman rifle. So any fan of the M1A knows that it's kind of a pain in the butt to put a rail on it and put an optic on it. So the original Scout rifle came with actually a Scout optics mount that mounts up here in the barrel like so. And it's actually not even a Picatinny rail, it's like a weaver-ish rail. So if you have any gear that hooks up to a Picatinny rail, it won't even work on this. But it does look darn cool. It fits up right here, it pops through the hand guards. So for a Scout model uh, optic, even a red dot, it would probably work really well for your needs. The aftermarket bolt to the side of the receiver optic mount is like so. It actually takes a lot of work. It bolts onto the side of the receiver. It's one of those that once you get it on, you don't take it off because you'll lose all of your zero, all your repeatability. Then there's this little aftermarket thing. You can see that this red dot's on. I don't recommend this at all, but I've actually heard of some competent gun guys doing this. I don't recommend it. But uh, I just put this optic on here for demonstration. So, uh, Sage Limited, I think, makes this little teeny rail that you can replace the the mat, the zip clip uh, feeder rail and replace it with a little Picatinny. Now, my thought was I would put an angle indicator gauge off of that, which didn't work out so well for me. I tried it and it didn't work. This actually has 
it's pretty tight in there. I've got it cranked down, but it has enough play that I would not trust an optic to it. So for your base model M1A, these are your options. If you just have a factory M1A, you have, this is made by Springfield, uh, Smith Enterprise Limited, and Scottsdale, Arizona makes a slightly better quality one. Uh, these aren't cheap, but you can get one of these and permanently fix it to the side of your M1A. You can play with one of these little teeny rails. This is probably the easiest to do. Or uh, screw around with the Scout. Now the Scout, this will only work on that low profile. If you have a beefy profile barrel, uh, this won't fit on the, on the barrel anymore. This attaches straight to the barrel. So I don't know how people feel about that. M1As get very hot. And I don't know if it'll mess up your optic. So faced with the problem that you want to put a high power quality optic on your M1A, uh, but there's not really a great means to mount it to your rifle, there are tons of options for aftermarket stock kits. I chose the Sage Limited stock kit, which features this entire this railed upper rail, and there I used actually a LaRue mount on there and it's mounting a 2.5 to 10x night force scope. Uh, it's, it's not an elegant solution but it seems to be working okay for me. Uh, overall it, you know, I, I'm fighting with the ergonomics coming from the AR world. Uh, the er ergonomics and the AR is you know, going backwards. But this is actually a pretty neat solution to putting a high-powered optic on your rifle. So after this rifle made its treacherous journey past the blue line into the safe world out of the zombie-infested California, he was then legally allowed to be altered into what California considers an assault weapon. California considers a number of these features assault weapon features. One, look at that evil pistol grip. That thing, it is ready to just murder ki kids, rob banks, everything. That collapsible stock definitely screams a terrorist activity because nothing screams terrorist bank robber more than an ergonomic, good length of pull ergonomic stock with a fantastic cheek rest. What else on here is uh, considered an assault weapon? Well, there is a high capacity magazine, uh, not shown, but obviously you can fit 20, and Checkmate Industry now makes 25 round magazines that are US, used by the U.S. forces. So you can get 25 round mags for these things now. Oh, and there is a little bit of the flash hider. Now, this is not a California compliant flash hider. This is actually a quick detach module for an NFA item. This is a 308 suppressor. This is a Gemtech HVT designed for 30 cal. Uh, the nice thing about this is this is one of the few suppressors. There are others, but this is one of the few suppressors out there that you can use on an M1A, and you can also use it on an AR-15 if you get the right attachments. Uh, PWS FSC 556. That's the muzzle brake you see on lots of people's. Uh, rifles, they actually make a special adapter that looks just like this for the Gemtech G5, and guess what? It fits this can perfectly. I have it on a couple of rifles, and I love it. Now, let's talk about the stock. The stock is a Sage Industries limited stock. It was designed for the U.S. Navy SEALs. However, this is a modification of the stock. The original stock had a skeletonized uh, stock system, and this one's a modification modified version which can just take an AR-15 stock. And I elected for the Uber, the Magpul Uber, uh, a couple of reasons. It has this optional cheek riser and you're going to need it because the scope is so freaking high on this rifle. To get a good cheek rest you're going to need it. And this stock is freaking heavy and it's a beautiful stock but it's real heavy and I needed something to balance out the, the heaviness of this other rifle. Uh, this gun is dirty, so it's all opened up for cleaning session, and this thing gets real dirty from shooting. This is from one range session, shooting suppressed, 
all day. Not many rounds. Um, I think maybe 120 rounds total. Uh, I need better light, but I'll get you a picture of that that bore. Very dirty. Here's a view of the bore. Uh, pretty dirty for one shooting session. Get lots of dirt and soot in there. Also, we were in some sandstorms during the filming, so or not filming, but just during the shooting. So uh, there's lots of sand and grit everywhere. Here's the piston, and the cylinder is in the gun. This is the piston after one single shooting session. Uh, I clean this thing after every use. You can see it's pretty blackened. I keep it very well maintained. If you see it after the cleaning session, it'll be shiny again. And the scope has all kinds of dirt and stuff off on it. It was raining and dusty. So there's all kinds of dirt smattered all over it. Trigger stays pretty clean. Uh, the stock itself is pretty interesting. It takes six screws to take the entire thing off. Uh, it is a pain in the butt, not very field expedient. This is more of a bench rester. I don't know why the U.S. Navy SEALs use these because, I mean, they would need an entire toolkit to maintain this thing in the field, but it is an awesome stock. I'll tell you that. Here's the bolt face. And I can't focus for some reason. Here's a view looking down of the major components. The receiver with that little Picatinny rail insert. The barrel length. And then here is the Picatinny rail upper part of the Sage Limited stock with optic. And then these are just regular M1A parts. There's the bolt and the operation rod. Okay, now all the components are clean. So you can get a quick look. The piston still looks a little dark, but it's clean. I uh, use mainly Hops number no. 9 and Slip 2000 for cleaning, depending on what I'm doing. I use the hops to clean up the barrel, break stuff down in the barrel before scrubbing it clean. So you can check out the bore. The bore is nice and clean. Looks a little wet from uh, lube, but it's not black anymore. I just do a quick, quick wipe down on all the furniture, get all the dust off. Trigger group, I like to keep it kind of dry. So it was a little wet, had a lot of dirt attached to it, so I'm going to keep it as dry as I can. There's the bolt. There's the back of the bolt. There's the bolt face. There's the operation rod. The operation rod spring. Uh, the operation guide block is actually different than a standard M1A. I had to replace the original operation guide block with a special one from Sage Industries. And what that does is it free floats the barrel all the way out. So that's the last hard point to the stock, and it's fixed all the way back to the receiver. And then from this point out, it's free floated. So it's supposed to give you a little bit better performance for accuracy reasons. Um, I guess I've seen a little bit of an improvement, but wrestling with an M1A is always an uphill battle if you're used to AR platforms. Uh, most of the accuracy stuff's been worked out of those. Okay, I just counted. This setup requires 10 separate s screws. They're all Torx. There's two. There's two more. There's another one. There's two screws that screw in this handguard. And then there's three screws there. And those are the most essential screws. And those screw in the operation guide block, which there's the holes for those. And those are actually very crucial. And those fix this guy into the stock. Now I was, ha I was having some frustrating times at the range the other day, and when I took this gun apart, these were a little loose. So that could be a uh, part of my problem. And now there's this other set screw up here in the stock. You can see that. And that pushes down on the barrel 
right here. And what that's supposed to do is it's supposed to kiss the barrel and keep the barrel from flexing above a certain point. And I've found that if people over tighten it, that it can actually move their group location, which is kind of a scary thing. So I'm still working on a procedure that I can increase the repeatability of that. But all in all, I have to tell you, this entire kit, I mean, look at this mess on this table. I can even take that LaRue optic off, or the LaRue mount with the optic off, and put this whole thing back together, and as long as my dope chart's all dialed in right, this thing retain it, retains it zero. So that might be one reason why the Navy likes it so much. Uh, this thing will hold it zero after taking this whole thing apart and screwing it back together. I'll take it out to the range and do a couple confirmation shots, like two, three, and they'll be bullseyes. I've been very happy with that. So prior to final assembly, we have the uh, receiver in action all put back together. So that's what it looks like. And you have your op rod, your slide ready to go. Just drop it into the stock and attach it using the trigger group. So here's the finished rifle all reassembled, put back together. Here's some ammunition I've been testing and using. That's what the 20 round magazines look like. Those are box magazines. Pretty big made of steel. Those are Checkmate Industries, CMI. Uh, those are the ones used by the US military. And uh, those are 20 rounders, so the 25 rounders are a little bit longer. Okay, I've been I've been using a VTAC two-point sling. On the front here there's a nice little hook on this stock, so I use an H and K latch. It's the padded two-point sling from VTAC and in the back, since I have all these nice mount points on the magpole using a standard quick detach. St this stock also has a standard latch hook which you can use up here. It's hard to do this while well. on camera. There you go. I'm not using it this way. This is a mash hook that I've been using on the scar. And that's it. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.